Hello everyone, Denise here. Um, today is January 19th, 2024. I hope everyone is doing well today. Um, so yeah, I just um, wanted to come on and share some scriptures and um, talk about um, something that that somebody had posted last night on a video. You know, this is someone that has great a great following, you know, and um, you know he he is a pretty good te he's a good teacher. He's got a lot of videos that you know I would definitely recommend, you know, and all that. But but the video last night that he posted, you know, and I'm not going to mention his name, but and then a, a video that he had posted a month or two ago, you know, a couple of his videos have me a bit concerned. Okay. Um, so right now I'm just going to start off because I just finished Hebrews today and now I'm in the, got into the book of James. So I'm going to start off with some scriptures that I highlighted and then um, go over some notes and then just kind of explain, you know, what this brother in Christ, you know, said and, and, and what, what I'm getting, you know, how my, my um, spirit did not bear witness to his spirit on this. Okay. And just how I'm seeing scripture here, okay? So, um, in Hebrews uh, 13, starting at 5, it reads, Let your conversation be without covetousness, okay? That is without meaning, don't be wanting things, okay? Don't be covet, you know, thou shall not covet, you know? That is like one of the Ten Commandments. Let not your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Okay, and it goes on to say, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Okay, um, you know, remember, you know, Jesus, you know, also, you know, he says, I feed the birds and I clothe the flowers, how much more will I not feed and clothe you? You know, worry not about the things of tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself, you know. He's not telling us to go out there and get rich and and store up all of our treasures here on earth, you know, where where thieves and and can come in and steal, you know, and where they rust, guys. I mean, you really we're living in a time, you know, like last night I was watching this short little video because you know, I think, you know, it would be nice to travel, you know, I just, I know, I am I mean, this isn't where my heart is, okay, my heart's to go home, but I just was curious what the new Brinkley um, fifth wheels looked like, and so there was a video, and I just thought, okay, well, let's see, and it was pretty nice and stuff, but the only thing I kept thinking to myself, you know, I don't want that, I don't want that, you know, if I had something that nice, and I'm traveling during this day and age, you know, I mean, someone would want to steal it, or it would be vandalized, or parts stolen off of it, you know, I mean, you can't, you know, when you own things like this, you know, like that, and you're out there, especially you're out there flaunting what you have, you know, people are noticing, okay, they, the thieves, you know, they, they see that, and then, you know, and they're thinking of ways to get that, you know, so that's what God is saying here, you know, that the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man can do unto me. Okay, remember, our treasures are in heaven, not on this earth, guys. You know, we're not to be envious of those that that have great gain in this life, guys. That's, that's here today and gone tomorrow, you know, and then, and that's what life is. You know, it's a vapor, okay? G and it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, you know. So, and it says, be not carried about with, di with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Okay, so, you know, so this video last night that I was watching from a brother, you know, um, I have nothing against him at all, but, but this just, again, did not bear witness, you know, with my spirit, you know, that spirit did not bear witness with my spirit, what he was saying, and basically what he was saying was um, that it's a lousy example to use a thief on the cross for today's salvation, 
And I'm like, you know, when I saw that, you know, before watching the video, I was just like, oh, you know, somebody must have been attacking him again, you know, because um, a lot of his videos that are really good, he gets attacked on, you know, so I just thought, well, I'm going to see, I couldn't sleep, so I just went ahead and tuned in, and, and no, he, he was saying, you know, how there was a dis, that was the Old Testament dispensation, you know, the thief dying on the cross, but in the new t um, dispensation, after Jesus died, rose again, you know, after his blood was shed, that, you know, we're saved, you know, a different way today, but I just kept thinking and remembering verses, you know, of how, you know, it's by faith, you know, I mean, and then he was kind of saying how, how the thief on the cross, you know, was saying, and he's kind of saying it in a mocking way, kind of, I, as I took it, you know, like, remember me, you know, like, remember me, like, that's going to get you into heaven, and, and, I, and I just can't wait for the part where, where he explains how that man did go to heaven, you know, and he explained that as well, but, you know, um, I do not think that is a poor example at all, you know, I do believe someone, if it's even, I mean, I've witnessed it, if someone is even at their very last breath and accepts, you know, and believes by faith, you know, it's by grace through faith, you know, in Jesus Christ, you know, not of ourselves, not of works, you know, I mean, I've seen it with my own eyes, you know, and then um, here God shows up, okay, so anyway, he was explaining how, how you, you know, Jesus didn't die yet, but, but I am, but I kept thinking, you know, I am sure that at that moment, you know, when that, when, when Jesus is there shedding his blood, you know, he's not dead yet, but while he is shedding his blood and there's, there's a thief on each side of him. Okay. The one thief was mocking him, you know, people were, were mocking him, you know, cause they were being, everybody was viewing this and saying, you know, you saved others, save yourselves, and this and that, you know, Jesus went to the cross willingly, okay, because it was the only way, it was the only way, you know, um, but the other thief, you know, at that moment, he knew, he knew, he, he absolutely believed, you know, this has to be God, you know, and he knew that he deserved death, you know, and, and he just simply, you know, he saw the blood shedding, you know, he just simply said, you know, remember me, and Jesus, you know, God, you know, God feels our faith. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. So, um, so yeah, you know, um, before, you know, um, so at that time, you know, when people died, the paradise was in a place in, in the earth, okay? It was like the good part of hell, okay, where... There, there's a part in Luke, a story where La a man named Lazarus and the rich man died. And um, Lazarus, you know, the rich man went to hell and then Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. Okay, that's where all the Old Testament people went because, you, you know, they believed by, you know, Abraham believed and it was accounted as faith. You know, I'm going to get into a verse here about all that from the Old Testament that the New Testament, you know, recognizes. Okay, I'm going to get to that. So... Um, it's just amazing how I saw that last night and how I'm in this part in my Bible right now. So I'm trying to present this the best way I can. Um, so so anyway, they, they went to Abraham's bosom, okay? So, so Jesus, when he died on the cross, he went down there to that good part of hell, you know, where everybody was that, that died, that had faith in him, you know, up until that point, you know, and then... You know, then he raises, he rose again, you know, and, and three days later, and, and they all went up to heaven, okay, they went up to, now paradise is in heaven, you know, but, but that part of paradise that was in hell, you know, that, that hell has enlarged itself, okay, so, so that's, you know, that's where they are now, those that go to hell, you know, they, that, that paradise in hell is no longer there, okay, so, so anyway, to say that that is a lousy way, you know, I mean, because we're in a different dispensation, I get that. But I just read, you know, um, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus, the same yesterday and today and forever. Okay, so, 
yeah, there's di dispensations can change, but God is still the same. You know, it is by faith we are saved through grace, you know. And so this man who said, remember me, he probably didn't have, you know, he's, he's there nailed to a cross as well, suffering. He probably didn't have much breath in him, but other than to say that, you know, he got those words out, you know, and, and um, God f f knew he, he believed, you know, believe in, in your heart and confess with your mouth and thou shalt be saved and thy house, you know. And so um, even in the New Testament, you can get saved, you know, even if it's to your last breath. Not everybody gets the opportunity to their last breath. They could die suddenly in a car wreck or, or whatever, you know. Um, anything can happen but but um you know we're not under the law anymore that that's what changed guys you know back um then you know people would have to use the blood of goats or lambs or heifers or whatever to temporarily cover their sins that's what they did right but um but we but but un, but the shedding of G Jesus's blood is once and for all okay um, Jesus himself said it is finished so so I just kind of you know I just was you know kind of um, saddened in my spirit you know I watched the whole thing and to see how he would bring all this together and at last night and then I remember a, um, a video he uploaded um, a month or two ago and and he's got quite the following okay he's, he, he is really good and he has some really good videos and all that but but he's basically saying, you know, trusting in man, you know, basically saying not right out bluntly, but, but he keeps going back to this, you know, that his house, you know, that he's had a long time, and, and I think, you know, that's probably paid for or whatever, but um, that it's got leaks in it and dry rot places, and he's just tired of fixing it up and this and that, and and how, you know, we're in the last days and our money is going to go to the beast system anyway, you know, that's left behind, you know, you might as well basically give it to him so he can give his wife and his children a nice home and um, make better videos, okay? So, so on that one, I was just thinking, you know, that that's not, that's not right, you know, again, my spirit wasn't bearing witness with his spirit, with him saying that, because then I think about, you know, I think about the, the Apostle Paul and many of the Apostles, you know, Peter and them that, you know, when they wrote things down, most of the time they were in jail, you know, and, and, and dungeons, you know, and back then I bet, I bet the jails or whatever today are probably like, you know, palaces compared to what they were then, okay, and that's where they did a lot of their writings, okay, you, I mean, I just, I just, um, you know, that just kind of grieved my spirit, you know, in that video, and, and then he kept going back to that, and then I think about the homeless, you know, and all that, and people that are sleeping in their cars or might not even have a car, they're, they're just confined to the streets, you know, and they lost all hope, you know, and here he has a home, and and he is able, and he is still making videos, okay, and, and God bless him for it, but I just hope that this brother wakes up about this, you know, I mean, God says not to worry about the things of tomorrow, you know, they will take care of themselves, you know, what we shall eat or drink or whatever, and don't go in to other people, even, even the apostles, even Paul, you know, he would work so that he wasn't held accountable to people, you know, yes, I think it's good to give to, if we have a good church that is out there, you know, for the widows and the orphans and the people that are in jail or prison and and going to other places in the world, you know, that are kind of remote, you know, and, and trying to get the gospel out, if that is what they're doing, I think we should support them financially, I really do, but for someone to come on and make a video, you know, I just think, well, what if he, what if he didn't have that big of a following, would he come on and still do a video like that, I don't think so, you know, so, um, you know, we got to be careful of, um, being covetousness in this life, you know, our treasures are not here. This life is just a vapor, the scripture says. Here today, gone tomorrow, you know. So I want to share some more scripture with you, and then I'm going to go on to my notes here. Um, let's see. Okay, so we'll just go to James' um, chat starting at, 
at uh, chapter 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You know, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So, you know, we're going to be tested, all of us. It doesn't matter how much, you know, someone has been preaching or how how long they've been born again or if you're just now born again you know we are all going to be tempted in this life with things okay and the things of this world you know and and there's temptations everywhere that are always going to pop up you know but but we need to resist that stuff okay but every but, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived it, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will, will begat us begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You know. But, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So... I'm just kind of sharing with you my Bible study in the book from this morning, and then I did take down some notes. So I'm going to um, move on here to chapter 2 in James, uh, verse two, starting at verse 2. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in godly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the, the good clothing, um, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, um, Stand there, that stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? You know, I mean, so you see a rich man, you know, in the room, and you see a poor man, you know, you're gonna, you know, 
the Bible says the rich have many friends, you know, you're just going to kind of push the poor man aside, you know, so then it goes on, um, hearken my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him, you know, blessed are the poor, you know, they shall inherit the kingdom of God, they shall see God's face, guys, you know, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? You know, that's what they do. And that has been my experience. Um, let's see. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, vain man, that faith without works is dead? Okay, this is how we know someone. Okay, it's not by works that we're saved. Okay, but when the Holy Spirit comes in us, you know, um, our desires change. You know, we don't have the same desires we used to have. All right, and then, if, then when we do make a mistake, you know, we feel awful about it. Okay. And, and when we have the Spirit in us, you know, we want to do good works. We, we want to share the gospel with others. You know, we, we want to share Bible studies with others. We, we want to see people get saved. You know, it's, it's not God's will that any should perish, guys, that, but that all should come to repentance. You know, we want our families saved, our loved ones, you know. Um, we want them, we want them to be born again, you know, and be set free. Uh, but, um, but yeah, in the Old Testament, you know, people did get saved. Let's see, where is that? So there's a part in here about everyone being counted for their faith, you know, it, the, the New Testament... Um, referring to that, but I've got so much highlighted here, I'm not seeing it, so, bear with me guys. Okay, we'll, we'll go to James chapter 5 here. Go to, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it, as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord. Ye have lived in pleasure on earth, and been wanton, okay? Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Guys, so, you know, being rich is not a blessing, okay? God says, don't worry, you know, don't be wanton, don't be covetous, you know, and, and when people, you know, I've noticed people that are rich, it just seems they always want more, okay, they, they're greedy, they want more and more, you know, scripture says that it is easier for a camel, a very stubborn animal, to walk his eye through a needle than for, it is for a rich man to turn to God, guys, and then I think of that story, you know, of um, the rich young ruler who, he did everything right. He was very religious, and, and and he went to Jesus and said, I've done this, I've done that, you know, and 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 Jesus said, well, go get sell everything you have and follow me. And then that guy walked away, Scripture says, sad. He, he had a lot of things, and he was not willing, you know, to give that up. You know, where, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also, okay? Everything we see... Is going to turn to rotten rust and it's going to be burned up in fire one day and gone it's temporary okay that is why our faith 
you know, is, is upstairs, you know, where Jesus went to prepare a place for us where no thief or rust can enter in, ever, you know. We'll be able to leave our doors open. We'll be able to walk around and, and feel safe, you know, because we're going to be in heaven with our real family one day, and I just can't wait. And then it goes on in 7 here. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. It's just, this book will never fail us, guys. So I'm just going to read, um, let's see. I'm going to read a very short little uh, paragraph here, um, and then I'll go on to my notes. So, um, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, um, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Um, and then it says in verse 19 here brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him let him know that that he which converteth, converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins you know a multitude of sins for himself you know I just think that's beautiful, you know, I mean, faith, you know, I think about, you know, I mentioned this in my, in my last video, the woman with the issue of blood in the Old Testament, you know, she, and the, everybody was touching Jesus, you know, he's walking through the crowd, everybody's touching him, okay, and she had spent all her money and everything she had, you know, and she just barely probably had any life left in her, but if she could only get to the hem of his garment, you know, and she was probably on the ground, you know, I don't know, she, she probably just was at her last, you know, just week, you know, in her condition, and, and just, not just physically, but mentally, you know, just, just, um, exhausted, you know, from, from this that was ailing her, but she had enough faith that if she could only touch the hem of his garment, that she would be healed, and then, and she got, she, she touched the hem of his garment, you know, she was able to get to, to, to him, and through the crowd, you know, and and he said, who touched me? He turned around and said, who touched me? You know, because that's what he felt. And that's what he felt from that man, that thief on the cross that said, remember me. It wasn't like, remember me, you know, we and, you know, like, like this um, preacher, this pastor. And I'm not a pastor. I just do, these are just Bible studies, okay? Um, but this pastor, you know, was just kind of saying, you can't, you know, mocking that, that he just said, remember me, you know, like, like, that's it, you know, and we can't, that's a lousy way thing to share with people today about salvation. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think, it, I think, and I've just explained that earlier, you know, they were both nailed to the cross, you know, he realized that is God, and that he was a sinner, you know, and he needed a savior, and he didn't, have you know much in him to have a conversation so he said remember me you know and and God he had faith that is what moves God you know faith is powerful guys it really is so you know I believe that's you know what we need to remember you know we need to stay in the word and remember these things and and not be looking to man for our material needs, you know, on this, on this earth, you know, like, like I mentioned before, I, I would never get on here, no matter what, and, and say, you know, help me out financially, or have a donate button, button on my page, you know, because for, to, to whom, to who freely has been given, freely give, you know, it is a gift of God, you know, it's a gift, and, so I've been freely given, so I just want to share and freely give what has been given to me the best I can. I am not a very good speaker. I know that, you know, I can really relate to Moses, you know, in the Exodus. My gosh, you know, I mean, I can think, you know, it's like I'll get the thoughts, you know, 
but then I get on here and start recording and it's not flowing like how I'm thinking, you know. So I, so I take notes. And, but I'd, I'd like to share, and I probably shared this in my last video, but I'm going to share Exodus 14, 13 through 14. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. So the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So what does um, the Lord will fight for you mean? You know, it means to be still and let God fight your battles for you and put your burdens on him and he will see you through. Okay, we're not to be looking to man. We're to look to God and have faith in him and, and he will walk by your side and when you think you cannot handle it any longer, he will carry you, you know, and the Lord's car the good Lord has carried me a lot in my life, a lot. And I'm sure many of you can, can relate. You can always depend on God by putting your faith and trust in him, okay? So, so we need to remember that, especially now being here at the end of the age of grace, okay? Um, because Jesus is coming back again, and he's coming back soon, guys. Uh, you know, everything is just, the signs are all here. I mean, if this isn't the end, you know, I don't know what is, guys, you know. So, um, best I can do is just share with you the blessed hope, which is the rapture, which is in the Bible, you know, um, which is a mystery, okay. But I believe we are that generation. <laughs> You know that last generation so the snatching away is going to be quick in the twinkling of an eye which is faster than a blink the enemy is not going to have time to devour us and since we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God those of us who are born again the enemy knows he knows he can't have us so who's he gonna go after you know if he knows because he sees right now he knows who's gonna go in, into the rapture you know the enemy knows so who's he going to go after you know he's going to go after our children you know even while we're yet alive yes of course and he's got his children okay satan has children on this earth you know the tares they are our accusers and our persecutors okay they're like their father like i mentioned they're like their father the devil like i mentioned in my last video um you know how satan goes before the throne day and night accusing the saints, he's not up there accusing those that are already lost that, that belong to him, okay? He's accusing us. And so his children, of course, are going to be about their father's business, you know? They're the blind leading the blind. They don't know that they're lost, okay? I, I really doubt it, you know? They're deceived. So they're going to go after our children. And God forbid any of our children be left behind after the rapture. You know, because salvation is a personal choice, you know. Um, he'll be after them then, you know, once we're gone as well. So, prophecy um, warns of judgment, and we see everything coming together, but there's grace and there's hope in Jesus, right? You don't have to go through judgment. Jesus came the first time to forgive us of our sin. He's coming back the second time as a judge, and that's not going to be good. For this planet but what a hope we have in Jesus so our hope is not in this world our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ he's given us life and and remember this if if you're a believer in Christ this world is as close as you're ever gonna get to hell so no matter what is going on no matter you know, the wars and rumors of wars and tracking and the other insane stuff that's taking place. Insane climate laws. And no matter how ba bad your own life gets, you know, going through trial and difficulty and loss of loved ones in Christ, you're going to be re reunited with all those in Christ when this life is over. This world is as close as you're ever going to get to hell. And that's what we need to remember, guys, okay? And 
the reason why we see all these things that are going on right now and what these globalists are doing and all the insane stuff is because this is as close as they're ever getting to heaven. They are trying to shape their eternal, their utopian kingdom right now because this is their heaven. That's why these things are happening. So, so what do we do? Uh, we do what Jesus said. We look up. You know, we, we lift up our heads and we look up um, because our redemption draws nigh. You know, lift up our heads with excellent joy. That's what we do. We say, though all, all these other things are against me, the mocking and all these other things, difficulty, you know, it's all right. This world is not our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. Our... Um, and that is where we are going. That is what keeps us going is the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus comes into our life and we accept him as Lord and Savior, and we say, we say, Lord, I accept this payment for my sin penalty. I could never pay it on my own. You know, then we go from being sinners to say, to say by grace. Jesus looks at us as saints. He doesn't identify with our sin, okay? He remembers them no more, you know? We remember them. The, the enemy reminds us of them and tries to remind God when he accuses us day and night, you know? But God chooses not to remember them, you know? It's finished once and for all, you know? That's what um, Jesus' blood has to do with my sin, okay? Um, he identifies us with him and that's such, you know, he doesn't identify with our sin. He identifies us with him. And that's such an important thing for us to, to bear in mind. And he made it so simple. Jesus came. He died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins. Because um, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There had to be a payment in order for God to be just. He came and he gave his life as a payment for our sin on the cross. He rose from the grave on the third day and has given us the opportunity by grace through faith to place our faith in him, to receive forgiveness, receive eternal, eternal salvation, and have peace and forgiveness and newness of life, even here and now, but also a living hope for eternity to be with him and with the rest of our family in Christ one day. Without Christ, we are destined for separation in hell from the Father forever. And he has given us this free gift that all you have to do is accept it. And I think that it's such an empowering empower thing that Christ has literally called us out of this destitute garbage can of a world and has called us into glorious life with him because he loves us and he wants us in spite of us. Sometimes we mess up because we're human, but he's faithful and his word doesn't return void. He wants us to draw near to him so he can draw near to us. We are living in a time, I believe, scripture says, Jesus is literally at the door ready to come back, to call us up to be with him and to take us home to that glorious place he has prepared for us. We see everything converging as Jesus himself said it would. And all this prophecy that was given to us in the word of God, he will accomplish. He's literally near in a sense of returning and calling us to him. Titus 2.13 Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So keep looking up, everyone. Jesus is coming soon. Take care and God bless you all.